All right, we're back at it tonight. We're going to talk about the United States' role now in uh, the conflicts in Vietnam, starting with the first Indochina War. The American containment policy and the belief that all communist activity was being directed out of Moscow, uh, that comes from NSC 68, is going to drive the U.S. to increase their support for the French after 1950. Um, and, and by the end of the first Indochina War, the United States is, is almost exclusively paying for the, the French combat in Vietnam. This is connected to what is known as the domino theory, uh, essentially that belief that, that if Vietnam were to become communist, if, if the uh, Viet Minh were to defeat the French, that that would result in the fall of neighboring states to communist rule. And so the United States does not want to see that in Southeast Asia, does not want to see the further expansion of communism there. Um, and so they're funding the French fight. Uh, but the French end up losing after their defeat at Dien Bien Phu in the spring of 1954. Uh, this conflict will come to an end with the Geneva Accords, uh, officially ending the war in Vietnam. Uh, France will grant independence to Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. It will temporarily divide Vietnam at the 17th parallel with the North being controlled by Ho Chi Minh and the South uh, eventually to be controlled by No Dinh Diem. Um, and the South would receive some support from the United States and the French in these, these early months after the, uh, the end of the, the conflict. Unifying elections were going to be held in two years from the signing of these Geneva Accords. But following the Geneva Accords, you get this massive flood of over a million anti-communist Vietnamese moving from the north down south of the 17th parallel. Many of these people were, were Roman Catholic um, and most others or all of them just did not want to live under this new communist regime in the north. Um, no Dinh Diem though, by, for his part, will have a difficult time in, in organizing a stable government. He is a Roman Catholic leading a Buddhist nation, and he often is going to be ruling very harshly, especially as concerns of, of violence and political assassination are growing in South Vietnam um, against his government there. Uh, the French will withdraw completely from South Vietnam in 1956, and the United States will begin uh, some more support of the Diem regime uh, with economic and military aid, including the first U.S. military advisors in South Vietnam. With America's support, Diem is going to reject the Geneva Accords call for elections in 1956. And this is largely because Diem doesn't think he'd win elections. You don't hold an election that you don't think you're going to win if you are uh, this leader of South Vietnam running against Ho Chi Minh. Diem has got a big problem, though, in his hands. Uh, and they're going to be called by him the Viet Cong. Now, these are old Viet Minh fighters, supporters of Ho Chi Minh, communists in South Vietnam. Uh, the Viet Cong name is essentially the Vietnamese communists, and that is given to them by Diem as they begin striking out against the political uh, uh, system in South Vietnam um, following the, uh, the cancellation of these elections in 1956. Diem will use the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, ARVN or ARVN forces, to attack Viet Cong fighters in the South uh, starting in 1957. Um, and this is really beginning what we could consider this to be a, a civil war phase. Uh, Vietnamese in South Vietnam fighting Vietnamese in South Vietnam starting in 1957. Viet Cong retaliations against the uh, South Vietnamese government will be, will be frequent and quite violent using political assassinations and guerrilla attacks that will start to devastate the attempts at South Vietnamese political unity. Tens of thousands of political leaders and civilians will be brutally killed by Viet Cong fighters um, in South Vietnam in the late 1950s. ZM's response is uh, by growing even more aggressive and repressive against suspected areas of Viet Cong support. Um, with the Viet Cong uh, getting support from the government of the North, this is becoming a, a larger and more violent conflict. Supplies from North Vietnam will be making their way down a connection of trails that goes from North Vietnam through next doors uh, Laos and Cambodia into, um, into Vietnam, into the South. 
as the ZM regime is dealing with more and more political violence, the United States will expand its support. In response to the growing violence, the Kennedy administration uh, in 1961 will send military advisors to support Arvin counterinsurgency actions uh, from hundreds in the late 1950s to over 11,000 military advisors by 1962 and another 5,000 on top of that in the next year. American advisors will also begin to join Arvin forces into the countryside, going what is called in-country, uh, bringing the first American casualties of the Vietnam War. As the Viet Cong attacks grow, ZM's repressive policies in the South will expand. By 1963, the United States is starting to see No Din Ziem as an un, unable to govern effectively, as his rule is so harsh, uh, especially against the Buddhists in South Vietnam, um, that he viewed as unloyal to his government, um, that will um, start getting worldwide attention as some Buddhist monks will practice what's called self-immolation. As you see above me here, this man has doused himself in gasoline and set himself on fire as he sat stoically in the flames. When pictures like this made its way around the world, um, it, it became clear to the United States government that ZM was not a guy that could keep the government of South, uh, South Vietnam together. The United States wanted a non-communist government in South Vietnam, but one that was not repressive against the Buddhist population in the South and could gain the support of the people of South Vietnam and stop the loss of rural areas to Viet Cong forces. In November of 1963, Arvin military, Arvin uh, military officers will execute a coup and kill No Din Ziem. This would be sanctioned by the United States government. Subsequent leaders of Vietnam in the next years were equally incapable of stabilizing the government as South Vietnam had to deal with more and more communist attacks. In that same month, later in November, on November 23rd, 1963, President John F. Kennedy himself was assassinated. By this point, there are 16,000 US advisors in Vietnam and the United States is now dealing with a new American president, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Now with Lyndon Johnson in office, he has got a, got a big problem with Vietnam. Uh, he is reluctant to escalate in Vietnam because this is just seeming to be getting, turning into a bigger and bigger mess for the United States. But he's also reluctant to not escalate for fear that, that this could turn into a defeat of South Vietnam, that the government of South Vietnam that had just gone through this political change um, might be hanging by a thread. And if the communists can, can take out that government in South Vietnam, then President Johnson going into a 1964 election might be considered to be soft on communism. He lost Vietnam and he does not want to do that. He's also concerned that Vietnam could jeopardize his goals of, of what he called his great society domestic programs, which included a, a war on poverty and some civil rights initiatives. Not wanting to lose South Vietnam, Johnson will increase the number of military advisors to 24,000 from the 16,000 that they stood at. But he didn't want to escalate further until he had some clear sign of North Vietnamese aggression against the South. Remember, to this point, it is Viet Cong fighters already in the South that are striking against the South Vietnamese government and military. Well, he's gonna get what he's looking for in August of 1964 with the Gulf of Tonkin incident. The Gulf of Tonkin is the, the body of water uh, right off the coast of North Vietnam. And on August 2nd, 1964, an American naval vessel in the Gulf of Tonkin called the USS Maddox will be fired upon by North Vietnamese gunboats. Two days later, the Maddox again and another American ship report being fired upon a second time. Now, later intelligence reports are going to suggest that this second attack didn't happen, uh, but this becomes very important to our story because following these strikes, the United States will order a retaliatory airstrike against North Vietnamese patrol board, boat bases and facilities uh, for oil uh, in response. And the American Congress will meet on August 7th 
and pass what is called the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. And this Gulf of Tonkin Resolution is essentially going to give President Johnson carte blanche. He's going to be able to do whatever he wants to do uh, to defend American forces and our ally in South Vietnam uh, against hostile North Vietnam and communist forces. This is what's going to allow us to move from thousands, tens of thousands of military advisors into Vietnam to very shortly hundreds of thousands of soldiers in Vietnam and pull us deep into this Vietnam conflict. And we'll talk about that more the next time I see you.